Well, I think one thing that I labored over was getting licensed in the US, and that's the license I think you're talking about. <laughs> and Aki, it was for I blood, imagine. sweat, and I tears. I that one extend. I have to, Even me I can to add. confess. Hey everybody, my name is Angie Morenga. You're watching Just Angie. It's Mwene Inchi Monday, where we discuss all things governance. We have an amazing guest. Um, Dr. Sheila Koni Mushemi, and we are discussing spirituality, mental health, African psychology. Oh, it's so exciting. Nobody would have thought such things would be exciting, but it's exciting because we're getting solutions, we're getting answers, mm -hmm. we're understanding how to do the spiritual and the science, and how the two can come together to impact and to help people. So I'm very excited. But before I even go into embodiment and fear, because that's where I was going into, uh -huh. I was going into, because your ti the title is Embodiment Power. Fear and the other. First of all, I'm very interested to know what the other is. Okay. But you have some very unique licensing opportunities, Dr. Konyu. And, you know, this is the place where we <laughs> blow our trumpet. We toot <laughs> our horn because, you see, you've done the work. Hmm. God has brought you back to the continent. You have a passion for Africa. I we do. need you. So if you try to downplay these gifts, <laughs> they're, they're, how are we going to use the gift? <laughs> Amen. So tell me, amen. You see that your amen is not very convincing. <laughs> am I allowed you to, to say, say that? To <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> you that. So I just want you to tell us about your unique licensing mm -hmm. because I think the unique training skills licensing is going to give you unique opportunities um, to impact this continent. And then you remember this is the continent where we value eh, skills. Makaratasi. Makaratasi. <laughs> that is what we value. Yeah. So you've done the work. So tell us a bit about your unique licensing. Yeah. Maybe even a bit of what you do before we go into embodiment and Yeah, powerful. no, I work, um, I do the private practice. I also get to work with an institution called Headington Institute. Mm -hmm. It's actually based in California. Mm -hmm. um, and we work with humanitarian uh, individuals and organizations providing individual therapy, providing assessments so that they're able to know, you know, how they can grow their sense of resilience. And it's been exciting to work with, you know, individuals <coughs> from all parts of the globe, mm -hmm. uh, and especially here, with those working within the global south. So here and even in the Middle East, here in Africa and in the Middle East. Um, well, I think one thing that I labored over was getting licensed in the US, and that's the license I think you're talking about. <laughs> and Aki, it was for I blood, imagine. sweat, and I, tears. I, I that's when I have to, Even me, I can to add. confess. Yeah. Uh, it was really <coughs> hard, and there were times I'm like, oh, is it even necessary? Because yes. if I come back here, you know, we have the different psychological associations here, including the Kenya Psychological Association, which I'm a member of, of as well. Um, and I know that, you know, so I was like, you know, I can be okay, I can still nini, but then <coughs> I really felt and had good supervisors who are like, imagine, Thank just God. do it. Thank you. Uh, and so, actually, the first time I did it, I didn't even pass, and that was like so hard for me. I'm like, Aki Lord, and I missed like by like Aki five points, imagine. Uh, but then doing it the second time was actually a really, um, just really pivotal time with the Lord mm. in wrestling with, you know, and I had a lot of temptations um, to even, you know, do more Kenyas or get information oh, that was not legit. And I really resisted. And so that, that was another wrestling. It was a wrestling. I'm like, Lord, why are you just bringing temptation? But I know it's not the Lord who brings temptation, but there was so much temptation to just do it illegitimately. But mm. then I really felt, okay, Lord, I will just do it right. Even if I fail the second time, that's okay. But then, you know, by the grace of God, I was able to pass. Yay. And it was just close to when I was coming back. And so I needed to pass. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to do, because I would have had to leave the country. But I share that, you know, so that, you know, even, and there was, I mean, this seven-year journey to get to this doctorate, so many ups and downs, so many failures, so many seasons life. of crying and shouting and, and wondering, why am I doing this? Is it even worth it? Uh, but pushing through to the other side and seeing the fruit of it has been so mm. rewarding. And so I thank God for that process. I think it makes me value and appreciate um, it's so much more. Mm. And the Lord knew what he was doing. I think it's good for you to <sighs> fail fast, even if it's five points, hallelujah, then let's do this again. You like to do such things. Let's see whether you'll okay. get up and, and do it ways. again. The, the God's ways. Yes, we 
is a, a but he's a father. You know, I always yeah. think about him as a father and a teacher. And that's what you do. You know, if your child fails, sometimes your heart sinks. You're like, oh, God, they failed. But you can't show. Hey, you have to go more open your eyes. We are gonna do this again. You got this. Even even my I'm thinking, woo. But you know, yeah. that's what a father does. They encourage you to to keep doing it and keep pushing, and it's good. And again, it must be for somebody so that maybe you have oh, compassion yeah. as well. Uh, if you had a state, eh? uh -uh, one time. Eh? Trust Maybe it is humility that requires that is required yeah. to come with right. the gift. All the panel beating. Yes, I'm that pretty grateful. And I love something you said, is this that I cannot belabor it, but you said that the second time was pivotal because you spent right. time with the Lord. How amazing is that? Sometimes he lets us feel so that we can go back to him. It's very important. Yeah. Go back to drawing board. Uh -huh. So how do we do this? And it seems from what you said, like you had an experience with him as you did it the second time. Absolutely. It was such a refining time. I was mm. in my, with my friend. I had a friend who was staying in a different state, so I went there. And she would go to work and leave me, and I'm like, I'm supposed to study. And I mean, those, that exam is like for four hours. And like you're reading, I don't know, like nine different topics, and mm. there's just so much to read. And, um, and just feeling hacky, and the desperation of wanting to pass and the temptations around this is how it's supposed to be done mm. and and even appreciating the cultural elements remember the other day there was this story of the nurses who went to the uk mm. and they didn't peter english that they've been doing since birth you know sometimes i think having um sometimes the education systems or styles of Mm. testing have a different such sometimes i don't know cultural biases or things within um the system that the the way of thinking that if you've not either been brought up to in think that in that way yeah that it can really so, impede um okay. so i think there was an element of that mm. um within understanding like how come the people who are failing this course are people who look like me or people who don't come from certain contexts mm. or more minorities, though I know there's a whole literature around that, so I don't want to okay. get into the debate of that. But um, for me, it was a time to wrestle with the Lord, to stay true to my beliefs, to know that even if no one ever gets to know about this, Lord, you know before you I have been faithful. Um, even if I don't get to take in the information that others are passing along as if you read this, imagine you'll be set. Uh, and I'm like, no, no, for your sake, I'm staying true. Amazing. And I feel like that part of that has been rewarded. And it has. I didn't know that that piece of paper was going to be so pivotal when I got back. And I'm glad that I did. Mm. And even that you're a woman of color. I think there were lots of things that were against you that I'm feeling now. First of all, that all... There was a push, I mean, I don't say, I don't know what the right word is to say, you tell me just now, mm -hmm. but you're a woman mm -hmm. and then you are a woman of color. Yes. And I think that that in the context of where you were studying and what you're studying and even in the world mm -hmm. globally is, um, hey, it's like you start uh, with <laughs> odds against you. I'm not doing it now. So yeah. I don't know how that has felt for you. And the, uh, even sometimes when I see your pictures, you know, like all the people are different color. I'm like, hey, what's yeah, going on Yeah, no, here? that um, color thing or the Women racial, min being a racial minority. You see, growing up in Kenya, I, the first time I went to the U.S. was about 2002. No, yeah, 2002. And I remember it's the first time I looked in the mirror. I'm like, Kai, as in I'm actually black. You know, as in I'd never conceptualized being a black person, mm. which is unlike a black person who's grown up in the U.S. because you're so mm. aware of people who look the same, different from you. Mm. So I go and then when I went to Fula, I was actually surprised that I have this inferiority because I would be surrounded by all these people who are predominantly Caucasian, predominantly white. And then I would be afraid to put up my hand because I would think, Aki Konyu, you'll just say something stupid. You know, you're not as intelligent, you're not. And I would be like, where did those messages come from? I didn't grow up within the colonial era. Mm -hmm. By the time I was born, colo the colonialists had supposedly gone. But then you find somehow we've, mm -hmm. those messages have been in the air that we've mm -hmm. smoked. It's like, mm -hmm. you know. In the air we've smoked. They've been in the air, yeah, so we've, we've imbibed. Them. We've imbibed. <laughs> you them. know, we've imbibed those messages mm. of inferiority, yeah. of superiority, and it took 
some work within myself to be able to feel courageous to put up my hand. It took affirmations from those around me to be like, oh, we really liked what you said. And I was like, oh, really? Okay. And so, kidogo kidogo, I started feeling more courageous that I have something to say and, and have a voice to contribute. Um, and over time, I wouldn't say that that inferiority totally goes away. Mm. Instead, the volume of the other experiences ah. is the one that's louder. So they are and highlighted. Yeah, and even now when I get to be in contexts where, you know, I'm the only minority, mm. um, I find, you know, there's still that key thing that feels inferior, but then the more I found my identity in Christ, but also as a woman, as a person of color and owning my uniqueness, the more I'm able to sit in those contexts feeling, imagine I belong, mm -hmm. I need to be at the table. And even if you read like uh, Michelle Obama's Becoming, um, people who look like me, who, so, who the, the shape of the world or society doesn't always make space. I think she talks about like you pull up, bring your own chair. If there's no chair for you, bring hey, your own chair. Fix up, fix um, the chair. Yeah, or take up space. I used to have a little plug that used to say, take up space. And so I learned in all those contexts, let me bring myself. You, if you have a problem, shariako, mm -hmm. but I will sit in the fullness of all that God has called and prepared me for. Mm -hmm. And, and even that when brings me now. I didn't think I was going to go there, but let me go there. Oh. To you, to them asking you to give your... Is it the speech at your graduation? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So how was that? You see now? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I had the privilege of giving... Hi, Pastor Angie, you're making me tell about myself in ways I'm like... Tell Ooh. only what you want to tell. <laughs> no, that's okay. But it's important to encourage yeah. someone. Hmm. So I had the privilege of being able to give our commencement speech, um, which is during the graduation. We have three schools at Fuller, the School of Psychology, School of Intercultural Studies and School of Theology. Mm -hmm. So I was representing the School of Psychology in that year. Mm -hmm. um, and well, what I think I... was interesting about it is that years before it happened, I would be meeting with, I, I used to work during graduation season, during the commencement uh, day. And I remember two years prior, the people who would give the speech, some of my, one or two of my friends would be like, Imagine you in your year, you're the one who will be giving. And others would be like, yeah, you're the one who will be giving. And so, and I actually felt it within myself that I will be the one to give. And of course, I would be so freaked out. I'm like, Lord, no. The only thing that would encourage me would be the joy it would bring my parents. Mm. Uh, and so that was always the highlight. Mm. Um, and it was so well received. And it was a chance to be like, okay, Lord, you know, let you know, just to, I think as a, I remember somebody telling me when I was so afraid and he was like, imagine just the fact that you're there, an African person standing you in that kind of a place. All of us, I don't you know. know, we didn't have pressure. <laughs> Africa is standing there. You better stand up and say something. Yeah, <laughs> it was such a gift to be able to, you know, be an embodiment of mm. what it's like to, you know, come and do all that and still be recognized in that kind of a forum. Mm. That moment actually confirmed so many things God has said about me mm. and also foreshadowed things that God has said about me. Mm. So it was quite a moment um, that I treasure, mm. um, but also a absolutely freaking out moment. Yeah, you did it very well. But it was powerful. And we have not talked about embodiment, power, <laughs> fear, and other, but we have because you embodied it and embraced your power and your fears. <laughs> but we're going to come back to this because there's a call to action. Mm. So I, I, I believe even your story is about when I listen. There are so many places where you you actually have embodied your fear, where you've you've taken on your fear, you've taken it head on, and you've delivered. You know, because I've had the privilege of watching the video. I think we should publish it. I don't know now, but when I saw you walk across that stage, I'm like, what is she talking about? This was confidence. This was amazing. This was Africa. You know, um, I remember at Althea's graduation, much to the shock and surprise of her and everyone who was there, I shouted at the top of my voice. This one is for Africa. Yeah, exactly. And it's so sad that I don't know how to do anything. I would have... Uh, Oprah turned her head. She heard me. <laughs> I said this. I shouted at the top of my voice. Mm -hmm. Well done, Althea. This one is for Africa. Oh. Yeah, so that's a moment. This yeah. is for Africa. And know? even culturally, I don't know if they're, they, they just, they don't even clap hands. They just keep No, but Americans are better than the British. Oh. The British, that was a test in uh, 
Sarai but I've always been cheering out here. Oh, that's always me, oh, you know. I run, a, even at the pool, you know, I would r run alongside the, the relay. Like, that, that I'm that parent. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's me. That's usually me. I'm always that parent. I will mm -hmm. shout in the room. I will, I've always been that support. And I think now she appreciates it more because she doesn't see, but many people are not like that. Me, I'm mm -hmm. keeping quiet. I flew all the way to the US and then I just sit here looking pretty like this all those years of Nini and you're like ah, just that go, go go celebrate there the is house. nothing like that and then I she's what the only African I think there were two the only African here ah please this one is for the continent I even said yeah. that I said this is for Africa this is for the I said too much Aww. everyone around me was like guy but Americans are easier I think because oh, they're okay. bold Maybe loud not. strong be themselves the British oh my goodness they almost had a heart attack but I was not having it. Aww. We must celebrate. So I really loved the the confidence and the the what you brought to the continent by being such an amazing uh, person and and stepping up and um, on the licensing. I guess one day we'll come to that because I think it's important for you to have that kind of licensing here because they also have something in their corner because mm. you talked about the south and all that. But let's just bring it to a wrap. And then next week we'll come and talk about embodiment, fear. Power, fear, and the other, because that's what your whole thesis was about, yeah. uh, in, I guess, in the context of African psychology. But thank you so much, Dr. Colin. Thank you. God bless you. See you next Monday. Mm -hmm.